Hey everyone, so on this episode of Make It With Calvin, we're going to be taking a look at something I've wanted to see for a really long time from Artillery 3D, and that is an all-metal hot-end assembly. So let's get this unboxed and see what's inside. Okay, so before we go unboxing this, a couple of things I want to go over really quick. One, this model is specific to the X2 and the Genius Pro, so it has the bed probe built in. This is literally a complete assembly. This is a whole head, the extruder motor, the extruder, the hot end, the works. So this theoretically is a drop-in replacement for the PTFE lined one. The other thing is I purchased this with my own money, so let's get into it, shall we? Now, for those of you who aren't up to speed on why you'd want an all metal hot end, the main reason why is because if you wanna print in materials that require higher temperatures, I'm talking nylons, um, polycarbonates, things like that, you can't print those on a PTFE lined hot end. And if you did, you pretty much just destroy the PTFE in there very quickly. Neither of which are very good. And a while back, I did do a video where I tried machining my own titanium, well, modifying uh, an off-the-shelf titanium heat break for an X2. And it works to some point, but it's not as good as one that's built for it. So while I kind of wish artillery actually came out with, you know, maybe even just like a hot end assembly with the piece of PTFE that acts as a guide, that would have been great. I also understand why they just did it as a complete solid unit. So you know what, bakers can't be choosers. I will gladly use it. So let's get this open. The great artillery is probably gonna laugh at me for not knowing how to open a box. Okay, so here is the hot end assembly. Now, the one thing that is nice about this being a unit is the fact that all you gotta do is undo three bolts and you can pull off the old unit. Oh, also undo the ribbon cable, pull off the old unit, pop the three bolts back in, carefully plug in the ribbon cable, reset your Z height for the probe and the nozzle, and you're done. Now, from a cost standpoint, obviously this is going to cost a lot more, but the advantage is you now have a complete spare backup hot end assembly should something go wrong with this so you can at least keep printing. Now, at some point in the future, I do wanna do a teardown on this and get a look at the internals of this, but for the moment, I do not want to do any of that. I wanna get some serious printing time with this in testing both PLAs, nylons, TPUs, the whole gamut, because I want to make sure that this actually works before I start tearing it apart. And if there is a problem with it, I don't want it to be some ambiguous thing where it's like, well, was it my fault? Was it a problem from the factory? Don't want to have to deal with any of that. So we're going to keep this together. That said though, two things right off the bat that I noticed that are different. And I also noticed in the listing are one, they switched to an aluminum extruder arm and Obviously, some of you know that I had some mixed results in the past with them. Uh, does this one have a groove bearing? Ooh, it does, okay. That probably will help is the fact that it has a grooved bearing, so it hopefully will have less side load on the um, bearings at the bottom of this, but we'll see. The other thing that is different, but is also nice is the fact that the nozzle on this appears to be a hardened steel nozzle, which is really nice if you want to print in abrasive materials like glow in the dark, glass filled nylons. Obviously this nozzle will not live forever, but it'll definitely buy you a lot more printing time than a brass one. And believe me, abrasive materials chew through brass nozzles like there is no tomorrow. It does look like a 0.4. Let me just pull the silicone boot and see if there's any markings. Yeah, it's a 0.4, awesome. Oh, one other thing I can see is, looks like there is a 
bimetallic heat break on this. Hmm, okay, that's interesting. I'll be honest, I'm not a huge fan of bimetallic heat breaks. I've seen them fail, but like I say, I will hold judgment until I actually get some serious printing time on this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna conclude the video here and in another video, we're actually gonna come along and pull off the old extruder assembly, pop on the new one, recalibrate our Z height for the nozzle with the bed probe and actually print some stuff. So hope you guys enjoyed. If you've got any questions or comments about this, let me know down below. I am genuinely excited to see this though as this definitely opens up a whole world of possibilities for printing in, I'll just say it, nastier materials with your artillery 3D printer. So hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you here next time on Make It With Calvin.